Hi guys, today we're talking about my VDV kit. This is one of my more complete impressions, and I'll just be going over the different pieces in it to help you guys give an idea if you want to do a kit like this. So first off, I'll start with the gun. Standard issue rifle of the Russian military is the AK-74MN. So, you know, polymer stock, polymer grips. It's pretty standard issue. This is mostly what you're going to use for a VDV kit. You see some guys using ASVAL and other weapons like that specialty guns, PKM, PKPs, different stuff like that, but this is going to be your go-to uh, rifle. As far as the sling on it, I'm using an RT3. It's not the most accurate. You see it used kind of. Your best bet is to get one of those tan Soviet military slings that are two-point. They just connect here and here on the gun. It's actually pretty comfortable, all things considered. Next, I'll go over the camo. It's mountain flora. It's made for the Caucasus region. Um, it's really comfortable, it's really warm, I will say that. You'll feel pretty hot if you use this in the summer. This is more of a uh, autumn kind of weather camouflage. You know, think like 40 degrees, stuff like that. 40, 50 degrees, this is comfortable. It's a good, comfortable uniform. It's made out of ripstop material, so it's not going to wear out on you. And the color is kind of unique. Suits well when the leaves are on the ground and there's a lot of mud and stuff like that. Uh, if you, this isn't the best camouflage for bright green during the spring and summertime. Next I'll go over from the top to bottom the different gear I'm using. First off is a 6B27 helmet. I prefer this to the 6B71M personally. It's got a higher cut all over so it, um, it kind of fits better. It's a little lighter weight. It's definitely more comfortable. Just using some green cheap goggles. Uh, they just kind of fit the theme. As far as uh, I'm using a black balaclava, you also use a green one. You don't see a lot of mountain troops actually using balaclavas, but I've got facial hair and stuff like that, and that's totally out of rig, so I'd rather cover my face up and have some protection for my mouth as well. So next onto the actual rig and armor, I'm using a 6B23 body armor in Digiflora. You would also use flora for pretty much all the gear that's digiflora you would also use flora um i prefer digiflora i think it blends a little better the floor is a little bit old school cool so it's just kind of your own taste just kind of mix and match it um so this is a replica don't really like it it's a it's comfortable but this part the dick flap likes to ride up a lot the neck folds all over the place it's not made out of real kevlar so it's super floppy uh, I prefer my armor to kind of fit like armor should so it's just personal preference if you are not in the mood I guess or not able to wear like a lot of weight on your body for whatever reason I know some guys have physical limitations or some people just don't like wearing armor just get a replica they work for what they're made for or you see a lot with mountain troops especially they just run the rig over it over their uniform they don't run armor they won't run helmets sometimes, so they'll just run uh, boonies or chichenkas. So I'll go over the rig next. I've done a review of this rig already. It's a 6SH112. Super standard issue, especially for mountain troops, what we've seen of them so far. It's really comfortable. It's probably one of my favorite over armor uh, carriers. It's sort of a, sort of a good mail sim kit. This isn't high speed. It's definitely one of those more uh, carry a lot of stuff on you. It's a molly base with a bunch of different pouches that come with it. I can carry eight magazines, a radio, some other stuff with it as well. Uh, it also comes with a backpack and a butt pack on the back, which I'll show you. The backpack's pretty decent size. You can definitely go to a two or three day milsim with this if you pack your stuff right. This is would be a little bit more minimalist, but you'd be able to get everything in there. After that, I'll go into gloves and knee pads. Just some standard uh, green fingerless gloves. They're really comfortable. I don't like full finger gloves if I don't have to use them. Uh, they make me feel really hot for whatever reason. I'd rather wear a helmet than full finger gloves if that makes sense. They're just super comfortable. You see a lot of guys use them. A lot of VDV guys either won't use gloves if it's warm enough or they will just use thick gloves. You don't see a lot of these, uh, these but you do see them enough to be like, using them. Next are the knee pads. I don't really know exactly what knee pads mountain, floor, mountain troops use. Uh, they, I've seen pictures of them the few times I have seen them using them. They're green and circular so 
kind of just went with that as my basis. Green circular Russian knee pads. I chose Splav dot knee pads. They're the best knee pads I have ever used. They don't fall that much. If you tighten them down right, they don't pinch and they don't, they're not uncomfortable. They don't cause a lot of sweating, but they don't also don't ride up or down on your leg. Then for the boots, they're Garcing Rush uh, 35s, I believe. They're really inexpensive. Uh, I didn't want to get the BTK boots. They're a little heavy looking. Uh, I don't live in the coldest environment. This is more of an autumn kit anyways. So I want something kind of lightweight. These are more jungle boots with a really aggressive tread. Um, but they're cheap. Like I said, I think I got mine for like 50 bucks. And they, you've seen, they're definitely used by VDV. They've been seen used by VDV and they are black jack boots so they fit the impression well. Uh, and then I'll, now I'm just gonna like turn around, give you a view of different pieces on my back, and then after that I'll have a little bit of a uh, little of my afterthoughts. So you can see your butt pack here with some pouches inside. I found this works best for carrying water bottles and just your standard booties and other stuff like that for airsoft. Uh, real world application, this would probably be good for like a single MRE and some extra socks and stuff like that. Then the backpack is a decent size as you can see. You can tie your bedding onto the bottom of it with different straps. There's straps all over it, there's side pockets for ponchos and stuff like that as well. So my thoughts on this rig, it's really comfortable, this whole setup is, but it's kind of a heavier setup. This is definitely like a, this is a standard grunt fighting kit. This will be really comfortable for Compared to other kits I've used for longer engagements, this would be pretty comfortable, all things considered. You can fit a lot of stuff on it. So, you know, if you want to carry a bunch of mags and you kind of want to be holding positions and uh, taking your time, this is really good. You can always take the armor off and change out the helmet for like a Panama hat or a, uh, a Chichenka of some kind, something like that. Be lighter weight. And as far as, uh, as far as everything goes, it's probably one of the more complete impressions I have. I've tried to switch this out for real stuff. Like I said, I'm not a fan of these replicas. That's my main complaint. Everything else about this kit is actually really comfortable and really nice to use. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Any requests for kit, also put them in the comments below. I'm trying to get more stuff going. And if you want any specific items reviewed, comments below again. You know, like, subscribe, share this if you want your friends to see this. You know, for some inspiration for kids you guys can do. Peace out.